So we're gonna do another the se uh, segment for show us your coffee bars uh, segment with Jay from North Carolina. Jay actually, Jay happened to be my fellow Korean, and I that know is Jay right. is quite younger than me, but you know, <laughs> how old are you now, Jay? I am 26. 26. You're like, you're like kind of like my son's age, pretty much. <laughs> okay. Anyway. Oh man. Uh, so hey, so tell okay. Show us your coffee bar. I'd love to see okay. it because you have a very unique coffee bar setup, though. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, let me flip the camera around real yeah. quick. Okay. So uh, this is this is the whole setup right here. Man, okay. That's nice. Very nice. Um, so, I mean, honestly, Hoon, I, I don't drink a whole lot of espresso. Yeah. Um, and when I do, you know, I, I don't really make a whole lot of milk beverages either. And so uh it's definitely more brew focused uh, okay. bar here but um yeah so we I, I try to spend as little money as possible on espresso uh while still being able to pull some really good light roast shots um so yeah here we my grinder for espresso is the uh, eureka mignon note okay um, note. it's yeah it's basically the same exact thing as silenzio but yep. um yeah, just louder, and but I did a few modifications to it, like the uh, okay. dial adjustment um, for the scale for espresso of the Kyle Lunar, um, and a few other things here. Uh, the Easy Presto JX Pro. This has been an incredible grinder. Uh, I took this one to Korea with me, okay, because um, I just got back from my trip to Korea, and um, that's been really cool. Just getting to really experiment with it as my main grinder um, while I was there. But yeah, and then it's just the Gadget Classic Pro with a few uh, modifications. It's got the PID kit and uh, and the brew pressure gauge. Um, okay. What else? I have the dimmer mod done to it, so I can actually play around with the with the brew pressure and whatnot. And um, yeah, low profile drip tray and a few other small things. Man, but, Jay, the dad is a decked out though. Goodness. Yeah, I mean, this is as far as you can take a Gaja Classic Pro, unless you. I know. Unless you so, go with like an Arduino mod, but yeah. So is that what aftermarket parts, or is there something you made it? No, so yeah, all these are uh, parts from Shades of Coffee. Okay. Uh, I believe they're based out of the UK, and um, okay. yeah, I mean, they they make everything. They they made uh, this low profile drip tray. They make this extended uh, purge valve. Um, yeah, I mean, everything is basically plug and play, but PID, it definitely took a little bit. But yep. um, yeah, so. Man, um, okay. I mean, I, I think that's all you need comes to express wise. And that's pretty much, that's good as get. Right. I mean, you know, yeah, I mean so for under a thousand bucks, I'm really happy with the, you could, yep. uh, the quality of espresso this thing makes. And so it's been, it's been nice. Okay. Um, yeah. But. But obviously, like I said, I, I do a lot more filter coffee. Okay. And so uh, this is the filter coffee section of the brew bar. Uh, and the fellow Ode, um, it's got the SSP MP burrs in it. You got MP? Okay. Um, are you gonna yeah. Are you gonna try out the the Gen two birds? No, no, I don't think so. No. I know that if it's really worth trying out over the MP, it's just really so so good. Okay. Of grinders, uh, the fellow owed with its super consistent RPM, um, and with the MP burrs, I mean, the, the cup quality is fantastic. So, uh, okay. I think going down, going to like a the, the Gen 2 burrs would be a bit of a downgrade, okay? So, <laughs> actually, so you got uh, Gen 2, I got the fellow kettle there as well. Yep, uh, the fellow kettle, uh, it's okay. Um, I'm considering also picking up a brewist uh, just because. As you know, the flow you you can't really fast yep. with the with the with the EKG, and so um, some of the recipes are a little bit challenging with it. And so I'll probably end up picking up a brewist as well. Okay, um, that way I can really play around with some uh, heavier flow. And uh, here's some drippers. Um, we have the Origami uh, Oreo V3, which has been a has been my daily driver for quite some time. Um, the Kono, which is uh, new to me, I'm going to be experimenting with that. The Hario Switch, the V60 Mugen, um, the 
and a few others, but yeah, actually here's one more, <laughs> but using this as like a decoration, it's, it's a Kalita. <laughs> that's, that's cool. That's cool. Yeah. yeah. So Jake, uh, so I have no luck getting the Aurea V3. Okay. They're all sold uh, out. Every time. Yeah. So how do you like it? I mean, what do you I like mean, about the Aurea V3? So uh, this is where things get a little interesting. Let me uh, yeah. let me place you back here. Uh, so the Oreo V3 has been really interesting, right? And um, so some of the things I noticed with it is that uh, the flow rate is is quite fast. It is, it is fast. But because of the design and the angle of the sides, uh, what happens is is the initial maybe thirty to forty percent of the pour. Mm -hmm. uh, is really fast, but then towards the end of the brew, it slows down significantly. And uh, this is actually something that I've been noticing. Um, and was like, ah, oh, man, this is this is a little disappointing that it doesn't have a consistent flow rate. Um, and uh, after speaking with Patrick Rolf over at April, mm -hmm. um, I mean, he he's ran the same experiments and uh, had the same results, which is why uh, you know. Not exactly why he made the April, but uh, the April brewer actually makes a lot of sense um, scientifically. Um, and so I'm looking forward to actually buying an April uh, dripper as well. Okay, what is the brew time on your Aurea? It really depends. Uh, some of the single pour recipes I have, I can brew as quickly as uh, minute 30. Okay. Um, but I really don't like to, I don't, I really don't want to go over. 230 uh for my tdt so uh that's kind of the the sweet spot it's right around yeah. so i mean that's why since i since i didn't have an aurea because uh i'm because i got everything but the aurea pretty much gotcha and then, so i got my tricklet okay as you know have, have you tried yeah. tricklet yet i i have not um but okay I, i've seen what you've been doing with it <laughs> yeah yeah, because since I don't have fast brew, so I've been using yeah. my trickle as kind of like, you know, because I want the fast brew time, okay? Yeah. So, I mean, it's been worked out great, and I, I use that with the mellow drip, uh, mellow drip lift as gotcha. well, a combination. But yeah, so, so, so Aurea, I want to try, and also I found this wonderful, the little brewer, okay, from AliExpress. Okay. Okay, AliExpress is coming hopefully next week. Okay. I mean, that, that thing is a super fast. They're pretty much on the bottom, you got the four wires, that's it. Hold on wow. paper, all right? Wow. So wow. I, think, I think I'm gonna be trying that coming, you know, coming weeks. But yeah, again, I, I really like the fast brew. I like between like two, two and a half is my max, okay? Wow. I like to be around two minute mark there. So I feel like they're give, uh, giving that very sweet, wear balance cup so yeah you know uh i've also played around with uh faster flows and whatnot um especially because i really enjoy light roast coffees right and um so uh i, I don't really want the coffee to be in contact with water for a really long yep. time but but something i've noticed is that uh when you when you use such a fast flow rate or, or when your contact time with water and coffee is reduced so significantly, uh, you're missing out on quite a bit of complexity. Um, Tetsu Katsuya, uh, the guy who made the 4-6 method for the V60 uh, and the World Brewers Cup champion, mm -hmm. he also recently, it's not recently, it's been a few years, but uh, he released a single pour V60 method um, okay. where he pours 300 grams of water in 30 seconds Yep. And the total and the to total drawdown time is like right around a minute 30. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, it, it, it was it made for a sweeter cup, um, but also not very complex because uh, you just aren't able to extract a lot of the flavors that the coffee has to offer. And so, um, yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know how I feel about extremely fast flows. Uh, I think a good balance of uh the contact time is really important uh i mean that's why good they, flavors. they gotta try all of them okay. that is true have you okay. tried the april hoon no not yet uh that's my next thing on my list because again i mean i, I really like the flat bottom yep is the april flat bottom 
So here's here's the cool part, um, and, and I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll get to what April is. So um, April actually recently launched a cafe in Seoul. Okay. And uh, Patrick Rolf, he was actually, owner of April. He was actually there in Seoul, um, and so I met him and uh, hung out with him for two two ish hours, just talking coffee, drinking coffee at, at the cafe, and um, kind of got to understand why uh, he designed the April uh, dripper. Right. And so hey, uh, do you have it on the back? No, no. Unfortunately, I don't. Unfortunately, I don't. Um, and uh, I'm going to order it soon. But uh, yeah, Man, so he didn't give it to you. I, I try to buy one. I try to buy okay. it there. But because of uh, Korean import rules or whatever, he wasn't able to sell them yet. And so uh, it was a bit oh, of a bummer. Man, really? Yeah, it was a bit of a bummer. But um, so. In order to explain, like the April board, the way it looks is, so here's the Oreo V3, right? Yeah. Um, it's just flat with a few holes. Uh, it's it's much like the Stag X. I mean, not the Stag X. Uh, what's that? What's the fellow dripper? Yeah. Uh, it's Stag X. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, it yeah, is Stag X. Yeah. It's much like the Stag X, but with April dripper, uh, there's actually three, three. I think it's three posts. Uh, in the bottom that lifts up the filter a little bit. Okay. And uh, from what I've seen, it, it almost it, it's almost like combining uh, a conical shape okay. uh, dripper, like a V60 and yep. a flat bottom, in a way because because there's that because there's the three posts right, and the filter sits on top. There's a little bit that goes you know down towards the middle. So you're able to capture a lot of the sweet um, characters that, that we're looking for out of a flat bottom dripper uh, while also being able to capture some of the clean acidities as well. Hey, you know what? Here's the thing, because I've been playing with all kinds of drippers, okay? Yeah. V60, I try with uh, Stack X. Yeah. Obviously, I did the no bypass, like, you know, next yeah. level or, or triplet. And... The, the so far, the best cup of coffee I had was my modified triplet method. All right. Oh, really? Because I try with the different water temperature, uh, different uh, water type as well, and also different sets of grinders. You know. Gotcha. I, I got them all, so I try with everything. <laughs> so far, that this thing, okay, is ugly. You know, it does not make any sense, but it works for me at the moment. But but I'm gonna be doing some more blind tasting coming up. But again, right I'm, I'm really looking forward. So I think I definitely need to check out the April Draper though, for sure. Yeah, that and uh, I also also I know you use the Kalita Wave filters. Oh yeah. Um, and I don't. So personally, I, I noticed the Kalita Waves to be a little bit inconsistent. Mm -hmm. um, and at first, I wasn't sure what was going on because with the Aurea, uh, I use Kalita 185s as well. Okay. But the drawdown time would just fluctuate quite a bit with the same recipe. So I was, I was just like, what, it, what is happening? Um, and it's in the filter. The filter itself is quite inconsistent. Uh, there's quite a lot of variances and thickness at the bottom. Um, and so that's another reason why um, I would like to check out the April Brewers or at least at the very minimum buy the April filters. Uh, because that's oh, so, another- Wait, so is the April has their own filter? Correct. That is correct. Um, because originally, uh, when Patrick designed mm -hmm. the April drippers, uh, he, he, he could use the Kalita wave filters, but he noticed the same things where okay. the wave filters were just inconsistent. So uh, he went ahead and just designed his own filters uh, that are incredibly consistent. And so, so it's not a wave then, right? It's more like flat. It is. No, it, it is, is a wave. wave. Oh. It is a wave. It is a wave. Um, just uh, different filters, just different paper type. Um, and obviously different factory. Um, so yeah. Okay. By the way, so how's the coffee scene in Korea right now? Yeah. So that's, uh, that's the really, the fun part we're all here kind of here for today. Um, coffee scene in Korea is insane. Um, there is so much money being spent in the coffee industry in Korea. Um, so Korea is a tiny, tiny little country. Um, South Korea is about the size of a Lake Mich of Lake Michigan, I think. Um, but we're the third highest spending consumer country in coffee in the world. I mean, that's just insane. 
Um, and that really shows when you walk around the streets of Korea, um, there's just cafes everywhere, everywhere. Okay, um, so, so okay, so when I was you know grew up in Korea, so I, mean, I went to high school, you know, up to high school. Yeah. You know, when I was in high school, you know, walking down the street, walking down the Seoul, you know, uh, walking down the uh, gosh, uh, what? So there's no coax uh, shopping center way back when. So Gangnam wasn't that popular. Uh, the, the Myeongdong was a really popular place. Gotcha, gotcha. The Myeongdong was the place. So, you know, we go to Myeongdong and, you know, we hang out. There's no coffee bars at the time. <laughs> There's none. None of those. Yeah. Maybe right. one, maybe two. Right. But now you're telling me they got so many coffee bars, you know. Hoon, let's see here. Um, shoot. I would say in Seoul, in Gangnam, or even Myeongdong, yeah. right? Yeah. In a, it, let's say in a mile, in a mile of a strip, there's probably, ah, uh, probably 30 cafes. <laughs> I mean, there's a lot, there's, there is a lot. Um, and so I, I was in Korea for four weeks and yep. I visited 53 or 54 cafes. Wow. Specialty, specialty shops. At least they, they claim to be specialty coffee. Because mm -hmm. um, I, I was looking for good coffee in Korea. I wanted to experience the coffee culture, what it's like. And um, out of the 53 specialty coffee shops I've been to, mm -hmm. uh, only five of them were good. Oh, really? Uh, <clears throat> only five of them I was, I was impressed by. Um, now, granted, I, I, I have a strong preference towards light roast coffee. Mm -hmm. and um, in Korea, they don't. The concept of light roast coffees is, is uh, very, very new. It's still new, and the education piece is still missing. As in, uh, people just aren't very well educated about what light roast coffee even is, and what specialty coffee even is, and why they're paying ten dollars for a cup of coffee. <coughs> um, but there, there's some really, there's some really good uh, coffee shops and owners and baristas. Uh, that are really trying to educate the Korean public and uh, bring specialty coffee a little closer to them. Okay, and so make it a bit more accessible. So when you Korea, the, the, the five coffee shop you like, yep. uh, can you compare that to U.S. standard? I mean, oh, which coffee shop or which coffee roaster can you compare that to? Uh, so th there's there's no large roasters in Korea. I mean, they're... they're 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 large, but yeah, um, nice small. I mean, yeah, yeah. We could compare them to ah, uh, we could compare to as 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 far as the kind of the taste of the coffees go. Um, uh, man, um, Onyx. About, who, which one? Onyx. Okay, Onyx. Uh, what about us? Uh, okay, so you got Onyx. Does they do really good work? How about Say Coffee? Uh, Have you tried Say Coffee yet? I have not. Brian's been kind of on me about trying say coffee, <laughs> okay. but yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna give say coffee a shot. But yeah, Onyx uh, a lot like Counterculture actually. Uh, Counterculture's yeah. uh, Lyra Rose coffees are, are fantastic. They're one of the pioneers in the specialty coffee speed here in the states. Uh, I mean, obviously, black and white coffee roasters, uh, my local favorite. Um, but yeah, I mean, some some of their coffees are really up there in Korea. Um, but I will say. There are a lot, a lot of the Korean specialty coffee roasters are purists, and so uh, they they don't really chase crazy flavors, right? Uh, that that we that we in the specialty coffee world have been seeing um, in processes, right? In different processes, uh, we're adding microorganisms, we're mm -hmm. adding, we're fermenting with different things, um, but these Korean roasters they prefer the the original coffee taste or what it's supposed to taste like. Uh, they don't really want to, you know, veer off too far away from that. So a lot of the coffees are uh, very just, you know, like uh, typical geisha. It, it tastes like what a geisha should taste like. Yep. You know, and they're like jasmine uh, and whatnot. Right. Jasmine or all gray, things like okay. that. It doesn't really veer off a whole lot. Um, so. That's kind of something that I've noticed is that a lot of the coffees in Korea are uh, quite bland. Um, but there's some roasters that do really, really great jobs at uh, roasting coffees and serving coffees. Um, okay, so 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 which one was that you saw? Wow, that's pretty crazy setup. 
Oh gosh. As far as setup goes, all, all of them. All of them. They have so much money. I mean, we're talking uh, multiple sixty, seventy thousand dollar espresso machines. Uh, all the grinders you could possibly think of. Um, I mean, it's just it's nuts. Uh, all the equipment, uh, but they're you know, but a lot of them their coffee sucked because it's more about the aesthetics um, than it is the actual coffee. That's what we do, um, buddy. That's what Koreans do. Right, and it's unfortunate, but yeah. I, I I just have to name five five of those cafes and roasters I went to. Um, yeah. One is going to be Coffee Happy. Uh, actually, I have it right here. This is what I had this morning. Um, coffee Happy. Yeah, Coffee Happy. Okay. Um, this guy, he he's pretty much like the pioneer of the third wave coffee culture in Korea. Um, and he, he roasts out of a tiny little roaster. Um, but yeah, I mean, super cool. Um, and all the, I have all these pictures in some of these cafes, um, posted on my Instagram, which is oh, at good. Blue by J. Uh, okay. so if you want to look if at people pictures, are watching right now, make sure to check out the uh, brew by J. I'm going to, uh, I'm going to put your link on my description on your Instagram gotcha. page. Gotcha. Yeah. Cause okay. that's, that's where all my, all the pictures are. And, yeah. um, uh, but yeah, there's, there's coffee happy. There's mesh coffee. Oh my gosh. Mesh was so cool. Um, yeah. so it's just a tiny little takeout only coffee shop. But they're just so good at what they do. Um, there's also Hit Coffee Roasters. Um, yeah. Their coffee, their El Parezo lychee was just crazy. I actually bought yeah. a bag of that um, okay. and brought it back. Uh, there's also Center Coffee, which uh, okay. they do a really good job at. And the last one is, last but not least, is April Coffee in Seoul. Um, that, you know what? That, that's amazing, isn't it? The April has actual coffee shop there. Yeah, yeah, it's their it's their first one outside of Copenhagen, uh, to my knowledge, and um, yeah, I mean it's just it, what a what a space, uh, what a group of people. Um, it's it's uh, it's very niche almost. It's not they're not uh, to me. My experience with April was that um, they're not very open in in terms of um, what what they do is what they do. They don't want to veer off, veer away from what they do. And, you know, their philosophy is so incredibly strong and uh, they're really, they're damn good at what they do. So uh, it was, it was a really cool experience there. Man, that sounds like fun. Hey, so who does the roasting at the April coffee then? April does uh, in Copenhagen. Has oh, okay. Coffee. Yeah, he, 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 they roast their own coffees. And then they're going to ship it to Korea. Yep, they did. Um, they, so... <laughs> I went there three times. Um, I went to the store three times. Mind you, from where I live to April Seoul is an hour and a half each way. Yep. I went three times because the first time I went, they were closed. It was pre-launch. The second time I went, they ran out of coffee on their first official launch day. Oh, no. Uh, yeah. And so I went, I went, I had to go three times just to be able to get that April experience. Uh, I don't regret it one bit, but... <coughs> Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, but uh, the Korean specialty coffee scene is certainly growing. Um, there's, like I said, the, the education portion is going to be the biggest. Uh, how can we educate the consumers about what this is? And uh, how can we get them to understand and learn more about them? Um, it is, but, so did you connect with any coffee bloggers over there in Seoul? No, no, I did not. I did not. Uh, my purpose of the trip uh, was actually to get to connect with different cafes and uh, okay. coffee roasters. Uh, and um, so that was my primary goal. Uh, I wanted to speak to the cafe owners about uh, what they thought the trajectory of the Korean coffee scene was going to be like. Um, and yeah, so that was, that was what I did. And it was, it was really fun. Really, really it, fun. It's going to be, it's going to be amazing in Korea for sure. Because, you know, yeah. I know we like to buy everything high end. <laughs> <laughs> seriously seriously i mean who it's it was crazy and one of the cafes that i went to uh they served geisha village uh, okay. coffees as milk beverages like they were putting geisha village coffees with just load buttloads of sugar caramel all kinds of stuff ice cream and they're charging yeah. like 20 dollars for these coffees right and i'm like why would you do that to a Geisha Village coffee? Why you could just use you know a super cheap coffee and yep. still get 
tasty results once you've added that much sugar to it. But, but, Koreans, but they pay for it. Oh yeah, they do. Hey, by the way, but, so so yesterday I had uh, another J on from California, the French coffee. Okay. Okay. They grow geisha in Santa Barbara area. Oh wow. So have you tried the the coffee from US? Oh, uh, I have not. I have oh, not. Okay. Uh, that, that sounds interesting though. I mean if it's California, I don't know how high the elevation gets. So that should be that sounds kinda interesting for sure. So they're very innovative. Uh, they do a lot of very interesting stuff over there. So yeah, the French. F R I N J, yeah, French coffee. So, people are watching right now. Make sure check uh, check them out as well. Man, it's not cheap. But okay. <laughs> so so, how's the coffee price in Korea when you were there? What was uh, the it, cup cost? Pretty similar. Um, so a cup of coffee, just a gen, you know, just your regular specialty <laughs> coffee, costs right around like six to seven dollars. Um, but when you move on to some of the more special stuff, I mean, there's there's a lot of coffees I had that were in the twelve to twenty dollar range per, per cup. Um, twenty dollars. So twenty dollars per cup. Yeah. What was it? Is that geisha? Um, yeah, it was. It was a. Uh, it was a Panama Cup of Excellence geisha. Okay. Um, and then, so how do they uh, prepare for that? So that's the interesting part. Is a lot of the coffee shops in Korea they they're still brewing like we're in the second wave you okay. know coffee coffee culture is it uh they're they're using the kalitas right not the wave but uh the, the, the cone-shaped kalitas with super restrictive flow um and so uh a lot of the coffees i had even even regardless of how expensive it was wasn't very good because the the way of brewing right the brewing methods were so outdated um it's like coffee's evolved so much but the brewing methods in korea are you have just been kind of here so it, it can't quite catch up so, so, so you also are somewhat over extracted somewhat somewhat over extracted and in some cases under extracted as well because uh i mean it's just they don't grind very fine a lot of them grind very very coarse very coarse even for light roast coffees um and so that was something that i was quite disappointed by um but yeah i mean it is what it is you know um the the a lot of the ogs i guess of the coffee industry in korea uh they're not they're they're not they're very they're quite stubborn so they're not looking to learn new techniques they're not looking to buy new equipment i mean I mean, we're talking they they don't even use temperature control kettles at these cafes where they're charging fifteen twenty dollars for a cup of coffee. So, um, uh, what kind of water they're using? Just a boil. I mean, you know, the, especially you are using the the brewing the light roast. You want right. to use the boiling hot water, okay? Period. Right. I mean, you yeah. Know, I mean, uh, from exactly. that, but but you know, medium to dark. Yes, you you want to be somewhat temperature right. control, but. Uh, special light roast, you need that initial heat to you know extract the all the flavor out. But man, what about grinder? What kind of grinder they're using over there? Everything you name it, they have it. Uh, everything from Bentwood, uh, EK 43s, a bunch of Malconics. Uh, I actually saw an old school Malconic Guatemala still in action in one wow. of the shops. Um, I mean, yeah, seriously, you name it, they have it. There is so much money in Korea. In I mean, since, coffee scene. Uh, since the SSP is in Korea, so I bet you they got some really good birds for sure. So actually, that's a, really interesting to say that. So uh, the the lab suites from Didding, yep. uh, the 804s, um, they used to come with Didding burrs. Um, but the newer versions, from what I've heard in some of the, at some of the mm -hmm. cafes, uh, they're actually using SSP burrs from factory. Really? That's what I've been told by a few cafe owners, uh, is that they wanted the old school Didding lap sweet burrs yep. in it, but in Korea, uh, they, they get, they come stock with SSP burrs is what I've been told. But how much truth is there? I, you know, I eh, know, who knows? So, I mean, I mean, I mean, just, just like my EK, you know, EK 43, I got the SSP, but they designed from the 2015 EK43, yep. the pre-2015, so get the geometric there. So 
Yeah, who knows, right? Right, but right. It's but I think it's all about the birds too. But you know what? The learning new technique for brewing, man. You you gotta willing to try everything. You know what I mean? Right. You right. gotta you, you gotta use the same bad coffee. Yep. Try with V60, Kalita, April. Doesn't matter. Just try with everything. Come up to your own recipe, and then you gotta duplicate that day after day after day. Sure that. And sure I think that. I mean that is the that is the hard part. You know. Right. But I, I don't know how they're gonna do it, but. I think that's why I think that it's just like like X Bloom, right? The X Bloom. Did you get to play with the X Bloom with the Brian when you were there? Uh, unfortunately not. Uh, okay. We were just tasting different coffees, hanging okay. out. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I'm also not exactly the 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 target audience for X Bloom either. No, although, no. I mean, although no. my mom, although my mom's backing the project, um, but yeah, not me, but my mom is. Uh, my my mom, I think, would really enjoy it. But uh, anyway. Yeah, I mean, I, I did get to speak and uh, speak to Richard, the CEO of X Bloom, uh, and I mean, what a what a great what a great group of people that are really working together to make specialty coffee more accessible to the general public. Um, and so, yeah, I 100 percent support what they do. Their mission's so cool, um, and the product's awesome. So, so anyway, so so are you all in on coffee now? Uh, what do you mean as far as work? Yeah, I mean, no, no, I, I mean no, no. that's what you want to do down the road or what? Oh, uh, you know, we'll see, we'll see, we'll see. We have a, I have a, I have a few things that I'm working on uh, right now, but uh, yeah, no, my full time job is still uh, in the commercial insurance. But I know, but uh, so what are you gonna do when you go back to Korea? Do the same thing or get a new job or what? Uh, those are all things that are kind of in the works uh, right now, and uh, I, I can't, I really can't talk a whole lot about it but um uh chances are i yeah there, there's gonna be some cool stuff coming to korea in terms of especially coffee um and so yeah they're they're in the works <laughs> that's good okay i cannot yeah. wait to hear more about it because <laughs> man that's awesome because you know i i, I didn't need to go back because all my family still there right now right my mom's side family my cousins everybody in seoul so and uh, definitely, I got to visit. Uh, hey, did you get to? Okay, by the way, the Korea, the YouTube scenes are interesting. It's not as big Great. as here, but it's a little. So, did you get. Did, have you reached out to Namja Coffee? No, no, I yeah. did not. I did not. I didn't reach out to any of the social media influencers or YouTubers in Korea. Um, but I definitely saw a few of them at Center Coffee. They, they come to Center Coffee and hang out. Um, but. Yeah, I, I just pretended like I didn't know who they were. Um, but yeah, it was Korea is so small that when you just when you when you stroll around the same spots, uh, you're gonna run into the people that you've seen you know, on the internet or on the TV. Um, so. uh, but, but but thing is, I mean, that's why you, that's another reason you're gonna have some finest coffee in the world because, like you say, the one mile radius, you're gonna have a fifty coffee shops. Okay, oh, yeah. you have to be the best. You have to be the best of what they're doing to, you know, to shine. So I and mean, the, that's the challenge, right? Is that uh, in fact, like you don't have to be the best at coffee uh, in order for you to, to be, you know, like uh, owning a cafe, operating a cafe is not exactly the most lucrative business to be in, especially specialty coffee. Um, but creating a space where you can charge a lot of money for coffee or beverages and bakery, <coughs> baked goods, chocolates, and things like yep. that, uh, that's where really the money seems to be in in Korea. And, um, yeah, I mean, as long as it's a really pretty space, right, the coffee can suck and people will still spend just got ungodly amount of money just to hang out there. Uh, and it's like, Wow. What if, you know what, what if I, I can do, yeah, you know? It makes sense because, <clears throat> I mean, what are you going to do at home? You got, you got, you are living in a tiny house, you know? You, that is very true. You got a tiny house. You want to go out, right? You know, you rather hang out at the beautiful place than, you know, some ugly place. So, yeah, you're absolutely right. Goodness. <laughs> I mean, you know what? Yeah. I mean, when I was in high school, way back when, we, we were always out, okay? We were always on about... Man, we. No. When did you leave Korea? In what year? Eighty-seven. 
Oh gosh, there's so much has changed. I mean, it's oh, yeah. really look like this. I mean, okay, so. <laughs> So I left 87. I, I went back in 2007, 20 years later. Okay. So they changed a lot then. Yeah. Now, even more. Oh, yeah. It's going to be a different world. Yeah. Totally different world. And so, yeah, I cannot wait to go back there, hang out with my families. And yeah, you can't wait. So you say you are going back not next year, but a year after, right? Yeah, 2024. And then you're going to be, what, live there for what? Somewhat permanently? Uh, we'll see. We'll see what happens. We'll see what so happens. Where, uh, are you going to hang out with your family then, or are you going to have a place in Seoul? Chances are I'm going to be staying somewhere in Seoul. Um, okay. But where my family lives is also not too far away from Seoul. Um, so probably just going to be going back and forth. Um, but we'll see. Real estate market in Korea is just it's just insane. So. so you was insane when I was there. Yeah, now it's yeah. even crazier. Even more. Oh yeah. The, I mean, so I mean, the ideally, yeah. I mean, even getting a small place, goodness. Right. I mean, I, uh, who, uh, we got a question from Jason. Jason asked uh, if I thought Center Coffee's brew methods was, was outdated. Uh, no, Center Coffee was one of one of one of my favorite cafes that I visited. Um, I mean, Jason Moon. Yeah. However, I will say, Jason, uh, I'm not a big fan of immersion brews, and uh, they use the clever drippers. Um, not a big fan of the clever drippers. Uh, I mean, not a big fan of the squish either, to be honest. Uh, and so that's that's really the only gripe I've had was just the brew method. But no, I've had some incredible coffees at Center Coffee. Been there three, four times while I was in Korea. Um, great atmosphere. Everyone's so professional. Um, yeah, they're really good at what they do. Uh, one of one of the very few. Uh, great cafes and especially coffee shops in Korea for sure. Center Coffee. Oh, yeah. Okay, so so which okay, so which brewing method are you looking forward to using it? Is it is in what brew method do do I want to use? In yeah, want to use since you don't have uh, right now. what the April. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, for sure. April first. Okay. For sure, the April. Um, but yeah, I mean, I I have I have a lot of them. Um, and so, you know, April, I think, will be my next one. And okay. It's quite possibly the last that I buy for a while. Because, um, as you know, even, even with just a simple V60, right? Even with just a simple V60, you can make so many different profiles of coffees. Um, now, is the, is the V60 the easiest to use? No. You can oh, make no. terrible coffee with it. But uh, once you kind of get the hang of different recipes, I think that I think a lot of people just go out and buy so many different drippers, thinking that buying different drippers is going to make them better coffee. But I mean, it's just not. I mean, until yeah, and so that's another reason why I haven't picked up the April yet because I'm still learning so much about the Oria, um, you know. And so yeah, uh, I think you know, you know, I mean, the the V the V sixty is I think the simplest to brewer. And also most technical grow out there. Okay, most it technical is. because people are watching right now. I mean, average people, V6 is easy, right? Just put the mm -hmm. coffee beans in, put in some water, and that's it. So you're gonna get yeah. a good cup of coffee. But yeah. if you know how to brew that V60, you're going to have some incredible coffee you ever had. Yeah. But yeah. the techniques it takes months and years to perfect it. So, True that. True that. because uh, the, the funny thing is, uh, so I did my Brewer's Cup, the prelim, okay, mm -hmm. uh, a couple of months ago. So the the Yuri, uh, she won that event, okay. She used the <clears throat> she used the exact same coffee as I did, but she used a simple V60. I bring out all my tools, okay. I bring my I throw everything out there. I got my tricklet with the modify, mellow drip, everything. Great coffee from mine. I think I got a, like 78 points on my score, okay? And the Yuri was doing the V60. I think she got over like 80 something. Mm. So, okay. So, unfortunately, I did not taste her coffee, but I thought my coffee was good with my brewing device. But <laughs> she's, again, it's all about the operator, all right? It's yeah. all about the yeah. operator, so. I mean, if you know what you're doing, you know, you don't, you don't have to spend a lot of money on brewing device. 
just spend what ten bucks for V60, right? Ten or fifteen yeah. bucks. True that. True that. That's all you need. True that. But yeah. Yeah. I mean, most of us we want something simple, but give us good coffee. That's why people are coming up with a different device to make us easier. You know. Yeah. Which, by the way, who, <clears throat> speaking of V60 and easy recipes, uh, Lance Hedrick, uh, he he his V60 method. One of them is a, uh -huh. it's just a double bloom, two blooms, and then uh, just a blast of 160 okay. grams of water, something like that. Is that uh, good? Have you tried it? Really good. Really okay. good. Really good. Very easy. Very consistent. Uh, it's actually very similar, actually, in many ways to Hideyazaki's V60 method, okay. which is uh, two blooms, 60 grams, 60 grams, and then 180 grams of just basically a blast at high flow rate, uh, high high height from spout to the dripper as well to really kind of disturb the coffee bit completely. Yep. Um, which actually he made that, Hideyazaki made that video at Center Coffee in Korea. Um, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he made that video in, at Center Coffee. Um, so... Uh, but yeah, there's V60, one of my favorites for sure. Sounds good. Okay, so, so what's the plan for this weekend? Are you planning on visiting any coffee shops? Yeah, so I'm planning on going back to Fount actually. Uh, Fount, I, I, I've known about Fount, but I just never went. Um, okay. because one, I mean, I, I basically have everything I need here, yep. you know, <laughs> and uh, uh, it's actually just more cost effective to buy twenty five dollar you know bag than to spend ten dollars on a filter coffee. But yeah. it's still sometimes nice to just sit down in a nice cool place and uh have coffee made for you by a professional barista. Okay. Uh, but uh yeah found coffee in Morrisville. I think it's in Morrisville in North Carolina. Incredible space. Uh people there are so nice. Uh, it makes so how's the coffee sit in your your area? It's pretty good. I mean, I mean, it's arguably, arguably one of the best in the whole United States, and arguably one of the best in the world. Um, you think? Have, really? Yeah. I mean, I'm I'm quite spoiled by living okay. in North Carolina. Um, I have I have counterculture here, okay. uh, which is who are okay. one of the OGs in the specialty coffee scene. Okay. Uh, I have GH. Uh, the GH is actually more so a distributor, but uh, okay. they. They, they, they sell uh, McConig, they sell Bentwood and things like that. Um, and obviously, I have Little Waves Coffee Roasters uh, in Durham. Um, and the big one, Black and White. I mean, yeah. Having and by the way, roasters, how big is the Black and White? Is that a big roaster? I mean, yeah, yeah. Black and White, uh, they, they, they push out quite a bit of coffee there. Um, really? Uh, my, buddy, my buddy Kyle Ramage, uh, he, he's uh, one of the owners, one of the two owners at okay. Black and White. It's him and uh, Lem Butler, back-to-back okay. U.S. barista champions. Um, okay. But yeah, I mean, yeah, they have they have they have pretty big they have pretty big roasters there. The roastery itself is stunning. I mean, it's just it, what a what a beautiful roastery. So okay, so so if every, everything goes right uh, by next Wednesday, I'm gonna have uh, uh, the one of roaster from Black and White. Uh, she's gonna join me for a live chat. Oh, Roaster Cat. Yeah, Roaster Cat. And then yeah, she's yeah, going to yeah. hang out with me, yeah. hopefully. Yeah. And yeah. so she's the one of a roaster there. So because I saw her Instagram page, yep. man, their roasters are huge. They're huge. They're, Not they only three, one, they got a couple of them. They have three big Lorings uh, and a few other ones as well. But um, yeah, there's, there's, some, there's some fancy stuff there. And uh, you wouldn't believe just how clean it is just everywhere there. I mean, it's just like... Yeah, I got to meet Kat briefly. Uh, we were just tasting coffees there, and Kat just kind of stopped in. Uh, I've been following Kat's content for a while. Super cool people. Everybody at Bike and Wine are just lovely, and their coffees are arguably more lovely, <laughs> which, is, which, is a, which is a big thing to say because they're it's just – what a group of people they, they have at Bike Wow, Wine. I cannot wait. I cannot wait to talk to her. And so, so what – so what kind of coffee are you looking for? I mean, is there a coffee that you really want to try? Oh, uh, haven't not, tried it yet. Uh, maybe, uh, I, I don't know. It's diff difficult to say. Maybe Eugen I, I haven't gotten to try okay, Eugen all right. Um, but it's a little overplayed, I think, um, in, to some sense. I, I mean, it's like 
Yeah, all the World Barista Championships and whatever, uh, Brewers Cups, they use Eugenoides, but we, regular people like us, we can't just go out and buy Eugenoides. It's not very accessible. How much is that? 300 bucks? Uh, I mean, like, if it's real Eugenoides, it just Eugenoides, then probably, yeah, probably, probably pushing it right around $300 per, yeah. I don't know. Maybe three hundred grams. Yeah, it's maybe two hundred gram, hundred gram. Who yeah, knows? It's, it's not cheap. Expensive, you know. Right. But I, yeah, who knows? Someday, okay. But exactly. I'm really looking forward to trying out the California Geisha, though. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. That sounds interesting as well. Because I mean, it's got a, my, my. I would imagine it would uh, grow faster in California than it would, uh, you know, in Ethiopia or somewhere else. Um, I, but I, I, I don't know because I mean, I, I, I need to go visit. In Santa Barbara. Yeah. And so yeah. you gonna be ever come out to West? Uh you're in Texas. No, you're in Arizona, right? Arizona. Arizona. I will I'll be in Texas sometime soon, uh, to visit some friends. But Arizona, I don't know if I'll be in Arizona anytime soon. How about California? California, that's a that's a possibility. That's a possibility. Uh, yeah, I I'd, I'd be really interested in seeing the Bay Area's uh, coffee culture, uh where Brian right. is located. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, it seems super cool. So, yeah. All right, buddy. Thank you so much for joining me this morning. Absolutely. Good Absolutely. Hanging out. Thanks for having me. Hoon. I'm going to talk to you next time, okay? Bye bye. All righty. Later, brother. Okay. So, there's the Jay from North Carolina. Just make sure to check out the Jay's the Instagram page. Okay. I'm going to put the link down below. I'm done with it. It's called Brew by Jay. Okay. It's called Brew by Jay. All right, I'm gonna. I hope you enjoy this little segment here, and I'm gonna talk to you guys soon.